Welcome to Cardiovascular Labs. Uh, on the left there you see our standard disclaimer that basically says we do the best we can to provide accurate and current information, but this video is not designed to replace your professor's information, but instead to supplement. So we're going to start with labs that we typically do when someone has had a suspected cardiac injury, particularly a myocardial infarction. And we call them cardiac markers. Cardiac markers are enzymes that are released into the circulation after injury. And so uh, troponin, the first one that you see there, is most diagnostic of an MI, or the best indicator of myocardial injury. Doesn't that sound like a test question? Certainly something you need to know. Troponin is very specific to myocardial muscle, and normally in all people, the levels are very low. So any rise at all is diagnostic of heart muscle injury. So troponin typically rises in four to six hours, peaks in 10 to 24 hours, and then normalizes in 10 to 14 days, so days later. Um, and if you look at this uh, picture here on the right, you see of the different enzymes that we draw when they typically rise and fall. Now that's not something I would ask you on an exam, but I can't speak for what your instructor would ask you. So if I were you, I would ask them specifically if you need to know all those numbers. I want you to know which ones are the most common ones and the best predictors. So troponin, best indicator of myocardial injury. CKMB, is creatinine kinase and creatinine kinase is found in lots of organs and tissues and we see that creatinine kinase alone will rise with any kind of muscle injury but CKMB is very specific to the heart and it also rises at six hours it peaks in 18 hours and then normalizes in 24 to 36 so what we see with these cardiac markers is that they will draw them serially, meaning that they'll draw them at the time the person presents to the ER and then at certain hourly intervals afterwards, usually every six to eight hours, at least three times after they come to the ER. So of course it'd be great if everybody came straight to the ER when they suspect a heart attack, but, but a lot of people wait a long time. And so we want to see what's happening with these cardiac markers. Are they rising and then falling? And then, then look at those trends and that helps them figure out what time the injury truly happened. Now myoglobin is another one we talk about, but myoglobin uh, is not a great indicator for an MI, so don't choose that on a test question. It is a sensitive indicator of early heart muscle injury, but it's nonspecific for MI itself, and it doesn't stay in the body very long. So it'll rise quickly in two hours, peak in three to 15 hours, and then normalizes within 24. So it's just there for such a little time that it's not a good indicator, although they will draw it and look at it in combination with the other cardiac markers. BNP is something totally different. BNP is B-type natri natriuretic peptide, and they draw this lab when a person has shortness of breath, and they're not sure whether it's coming from the heart or from a respiratory cause. So BNP is in the ventricles, and so if that number is high, and it's not a number we make you memorize, if that number is elevated, then that will tell us that their shortness of breath, their dyspnea, is from a cardiac problem and not a respiratory problem. Now these next ones are risk predictor labs, which are very different than the cardiac markers. Cardiac markers tell us signs of cardiac injury, the heart muscle injury, but risk predictors tell us, are you at risk for developing cardiac disease? So be sure that you're reading questions carefully and you're not picking any of these risk predictors if you're talking about, is the person, did the person have a heart attack? Because none of these are going to tell you that. These are going to tell you whether they're at risk of cardiac disease, particularly coronary artery disease in the future. So CRP is C-reactive protein, and you may remember this lab. It's a lab that tells us about inflammation, but inflammation is important in 
determining if you're at risk for future cardiac events, especially if you have patients that have things like unstable angina or they've already had an MI before. The problem is CRP is very general and it just looks at inflammation in the body in general and it's lowered by lots of things. If people are taking aspirin or they're taking statins or they've really been working hard to increase diet and exercise to improve their diet and exercise more, stop smoking, those will lower CRP so they might, it might not give us a true indication of their risk. The next one you see there is homocysteine. Homocysteine seems like something we should do on everybody, but we don't. So just make sure you understand that. Again, it's kind of an overall general test that can be affected by um, diet or by heredity. And so it's kind of nonspecific. However, in someone who has a family history of early, early cardiovascular disease and no other risk factors, not obese, not high blood pressure, those kinds of things, it's a good thing to draw to see. If it's elevated and they have that family history of early disease, then that can sometimes be a predictor of coronary artery disease or stroke. And we think that's because homocysteine has something to do with the formation of thrombi. Serum lipids, you definitely have to know. You need to know the numbers. You need to know what they should be. So those are really important, and that's because it indicates risk for coronary artery disease. Triglycerides are fatty acids. We see those increased, obviously, with cardiovascular disease, but also with diabetes. You have to be fasting to draw that lab, and we want the normal to be less than 150. In terms of normals, I don't think you should memorize ranges. That means you have to memorize two numbers. You need to either memorize like a middle number, so you know generally what the lab should be, or in a case like this where we're worried about it being high, we're not ever worried about it being too low, memorize that high number. Um, cholesterol is a blood lipid and the normal is less than 200. Phospholipids are really important. So we have HDL and LDL. HDL is high density lipoproteins. The way I remember this number is we want high numbers. The higher numbers, the better because they're, they're good. This is, there is a difference here in normals for males and females. But instead of memorizing that, I just kind of gave you a good number. So greater than 60 means they're at low risk. The specifics are normals are greater than 40 for males, greater than 50 for females. LDL or low density lipoprotein is bad and we want low levels. So less than 100 is normal for those. And then remember the ratio. The ratio looks at the HDL to the LDL. And the ratio is important and tells us about risk for cardiac disease. Average risk is 3 to 5. And the last test I'll mention is this LPPLA2 or the plaque test. Technically, it's lipoprotein associated phospholipase uh, A2, which nobody's going to ask you. And we see this elevated with vascular inflammation. And that's what we see when plaque is forming in the arteries is vascular inflammation inflammation. So this plaque test actually measures that amount and then can show the risk for coronary artery disease. Watch for more cardiovascular videos coming soon. Please check out our website pocketprofnursing.com. Um, I put more information out there. I'll put websites that are good and sometimes games to test your knowledge. And then we're working on an app that will be coming out soon. As always, we appreciate your feedback, so make comments. I always respond to those comments. Like or dislike our video, share it, and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll know when we get new videos out there. Thanks for watching.